chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So this tells us that the millennial reign is in view here. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, this resurrection specifically pertains to those who we saw being martyred within this book. It may also extend to some of the Old Testament saints and prophets. So we now have an overview of the millennial reign. And I will be going into further detail of that in the fall. But in this study, I want to dig into what happens before the millennial reign. So let's start in Ezekiel chapter 36. This is where God has Ezekiel prophesy to the land. Verse 1, Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and an infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahuwah Elohim. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Adumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are round about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches, and yield your fruit to my people of Israel for they are at hand to come. So before the millennial reign, God is going to revive the land and judge the nations who have taken it as a prey and the heathen round about it. So let's go to Joel chapter three to look further into this judgment. Verse one, for behold in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if he recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. 
Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for Yahuwah hath spoken it. So we see from this that Yahuwah is going to gather these nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat, where he is going to recompense them for what they have done to Israel. And we also saw in Wars Book 7, where the Romans sold the children of Israel into captivity as well, as Yahuwah said what happened in Deuteronomy 28. So from here, let's go to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3. Then shall Yahuwah go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now, the valley of Jehoshaphat separates the Mount of Olives from the city of Jerusalem. So this coincides with what we just read in Joel chapter 3, verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And Yahuwah my God shall come and all the saints with thee. So he's going to have the 144,000 which follow him wherever he goes and also the great multitude with him. So back in Ezekiel 36 verse 24, it says, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you an heart of flesh. So the next thing that happens is God regathers Israel and purges them and forgives their sin and places them in their own land. Let's move to Ezekiel 37. This is where the spirit takes Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. Verse 1 says, The hand of Yahuwah was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahuwah and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So after Ezekiel sees these bones, God has him prophesy to the wind, and these bones come to life and stand on their feet. Verse 11, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, Yahuwah, have spoken it, and performed it, saith Yahuwah. Now the picture that we are given here is that of a physical resurrection, which will indeed occur at that time, as we have already seen. But it says here, he will bring them into the land of Israel. Now those in the first resurrection died in Jerusalem. So this prophecy concerns those of Israel and Judah who are alive at the beginning of the millennial and are going to be regathered and reunited as a single kingdom as we see beginning in verse 15. So the nations where Israel are scattered is called their grave and their condition, which is described in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 in those nations is equated with death, signifying their overall downcast state from the time of the judgment in this book until the revival which ushers in the millennial reign.